Hey, this is Pastor John Metteret at Cross City Church, and we're so glad that you've joined us again for our Moments of Hope. Uh, every week, midweek, we spend time in the Word together, and hopefully these times are encouragements to you, and, and uh, hopefully you'll invite some of your other friends to, uh, to hear this message that I share tonight uh, by sharing the link with them, and uh, we're able to encourage lots of people. Uh, someone said the other day that our online presence is as big as a room as we can imagine. It's as big as you can make it as you reach out and share with other people. Uh, one thing I want you to keep in mind in prayer with me is our Racial Reconciliation Coalition. Uh, I've been sharing a few things with you along the way, and that's beginning today. So mid-July, we begin this meetings, and there'll be a series of meetings for weeks and weeks, and eventually into the community. Uh, and the purpose of that is to kind of guide uh, our response to the racial strife going on in America. We believe the church has solutions. We believe the Bible has solutions. We believe that Jesus Christ and the gospel has solutions for the racial divide that's happening in our country and uh, for racism and the sin of racism to be eradicated. So with all those things, we have high ideals and hope because of our Savior Christ, uh, and we want you to pray with us about that. Our series in our Moments of Hope is all about the Holy Spirit. And uh, so if you have your Bibles, take them and turn to John chapter 14. I'll share a few verses out of there with you today. And um, if you have been with us, then you'll remember some things we've shared about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in weeks past. Last week, actually, I looked at the Holy Spirit at the new birth, at regeneration, uh, where there's an incredible encounter between Jesus and a ruler of the Jews named Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And uh, in response to Nicodemus's question, uh, of Jesus. Jesus turns the table on him and basically says to him, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born of water, that is the physical birth, and of spirit, that is the spiritual birth. And, um, and then he likens the, the power of the Holy Spirit to the wind. He says, the wind blows where it will, and you don't know where it comes from and where it goes to. So are the things of the Spirit. And uh, we reminded you that the Holy Spirit is mysterious in some senses of the word. The Holy Spirit is powerful. It's also very soothing, and it's also very directional. It leads us in certain ways. So that all happens at the new birth. Now, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, preparing them for these things, he was in John chapter 14, and, uh, and he said this, and we looked at this a couple of weeks ago. In verse 16, he said, I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another helper, that he may, he may be with you forever. That is, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. And so we spent some time unpacking that verse uh, where Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit uh, is with them and will be in them. You know him, Jesus said. He is another helper like myself. Just to refresh your memory, Jesus is saying, I'm going to come in the form of the Spirit and I will help you just as much then as I do now when I stand physically in your presence. Uh, you know me now, and you will know me then. Uh, I am with you now. I will be in you then. So that's the basis for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Such an encouraging word. Jesus is always with us. Jesus is always going to direct us. He'll always be present with us to help us, to encourage us, uh, to reprove and rebuke us when we need that, to convict us of our sin. He is with you. Now, as often as people are alone today, as much solitary confinement is happening in the era of COVID virus, then I want you to know that Jesus does not desert you and Jesus does not distance himself from you and you do not have to distance yourself from him. He is with you. He is with us. And I am so encouraged by that day in and day out. Uh, I'm by myself early in the morning. I wake up very early and uh, I have an incredible time uh, in the word and I'm alone, but I'm not alone. Do you understand what I mean? I'm alone, but he's with me, and I'm with him. And I know this, at the same time, there are those that are uh, perhaps in nursing homes or assisted care living centers, and they can't be with their loved ones. They can't be with their family and friends, and they are alone. But if they are believers in Jesus Christ, they are also not alone. He is with them. He is with us at all times. And the disciples really needed to hear that because Jesus was preparing them for his death and his burial and his resurrection. And they were thinking, what are we going to do? We'll be all alone. And he was saying, you're not going to be all alone. Well, Jesus builds on all that I've just said as we continue in John chapter 14. And he says something else. He says in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, 
you will live also. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. So there's this really incredible passage here that Jesus is giving the disciples in addition to everything we've said, and I want you to hear it today. Now behind everything we're going to talk about today, I want you to keep in mind the picture of a Jewish wedding. The Jewish wedding is different from an American wedding. The Jewish wedding focuses on the bridegroom, not the bride. The bridegroom comes, and when the bridegroom comes, then the meeting commences. When the bridegroom comes, then the culmination and the consummation all takes place. So Jesus is going to give us a Jewish wedding kind of picture uh, that is going to have an immediate uh, fulfillment. And he's going to point to ultimately an ultimate fulfillment when Christ comes back. Okay, So I'm going to ask you to look at this as the immediate fulfillment of this Jewish wedding where the bridegroom comes. And we're the bride. We are the followers of Jesus who represent the bride of Christ and the bride represents us. And, uh, and so this is what Jesus is saying in these passages I've just read. Take them very personal if you're a believer. Take them personal as a bride waiting for the bridegroom. Here's first what he says. He says, after I die, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to go away for a while. After I die, I'll come back to you. That's what he says in verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now again, get in the context. The disciples are processing the imminent death of Jesus on the cross. The greatest one they've ever known. The one they were going to lay their lives down for. The one who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Fulfillment of all the prophecies of the Old Testament. The Messiah, God in the flesh right there. And he's saying, I'm going to die. I'm going to be gone. You're not going to see me for a while. The world will not see me. But then he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You know, we don't have to go looking for Jesus. Jesus has come looking for us. I will come to you. And that had to be of enormous encouragement to the disciples. Remember in John 14, Thomas says, Lord, where, where are you going? And how will we know the way? And it's important for you to see that Jesus is answering that very perplexing question of the doubting Thomas. He said, don't worry, uh, don't worry Thomas. I'm going to come to you. Now, some of us doubt. Some of us are like Thomas. We're, we're concerned. We have questions that aren't answered. We don't know what to do, what to say about those times of loneliness, those times of uh, difficulty where we feel like we're all alone. And Jesus says to the disciples, to you, I'm going to come to you. Just watch for me. Look for me. The second thing he says is, after I die, I will come into you. Now, that's different. Here's what he says in verse 19. After a little while, the world will not see me any longer, but you will see me because I live you will live also in that day. You will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Can you imagine anything more intimate than that? What Jesus is saying is, I'm going to come back, and that day you're going to understand that the Father and I are one. I'm in the Father, and that you're in me, and I am in you. So I'm not just coming to you. I'm going to be in you. And everywhere you go and everything you do, my presence will be with you. An unshakable presence of Jesus in our life. Now, you, you and I both know this as believers today, that there are times when that is extremely uh, soothing. It's extremely uh, encouraging. That when I am hurting, when I am uh, going through the fire, when I'm having difficulties, the fact that he's not only come to me, but he's inside of me, he's, he, he's, he's never going to leave me, he's made a commitment to me and a dedication to me, that's an amazing and a peaceful promise that Jesus gives me. But on the other side of that, there are times when I choose to do my own thing, when I sin, when I, I am in rebellion. And, uh, and those times, the presence of Jesus is not quite as comforting. It's more like convicting. In other words, I want to go my own way, but there's this presence in my life, and his name is the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ in the Spirit is in my life. And he's convicting me. So sometimes he comforts, sometimes he convicts. But every time that happens, whether it's comforting or convicting, it is a reminder God is with me. He's committed to me. He's committed to helping me out of trouble. He's committing to helping me out of panic. He's committed to helping me in every way that I need help to make it well in this life. 
I'm coming to you, I'm coming into you. And then the third thing he says here, and this is probably the greatest promise of the indwelling Holy Spirit in this text. Verse 21, He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. You know, when I first got married 42 years ago, this is hard to believe, 42 years ago, I'd known... Uh, my fiance Kim, now my wife, I'd known her for about 16, 17 months, something like that. We were in college. We knew each other pretty well by then, uh, at least by our standards. And we knew each other's family. We exchanged holidays and spent holidays with each other and, and so forth. Uh, but, you know, you know, you don't know someone that well when you uh, are on a college campus and when you date occasionally, you know, a couple of times a week. Um, and where you just enjoy doing activities together. You don't know each other as you go through the stress of life. You don't know each other going through panic and hardship and difficulty and disappointments. You don't know each other like that. You don't know each other when you have to work hard and you have to, you know, blood, sweat, and tears of everyday life when you have children and, uh, and when you have all kinds of pressures on you. You don't know each other until you go through all those things. But when marriage begins to unfold, you begin to, to see that my spouse is manifesting themselves to me. They're revealing who they really are. And of course, over 42 years, I've seen everything that Kim has shown me, and she's seen everything that I've shown her. And we know each other really, really, really well. So in that sense, we have disclosed ourselves to each other, and now we trust each other, and, and we share each other's thoughts and intense and everything else and that's a powerful picture but here's what jesus is saying here jesus is saying like marriage when you're with me and when you let me walk with you and in you you're going to see who i really am you're going to experience me in my fullness now that is an incredible promise i will disclose myself to you let me name just a few things what he's saying is i'll reveal my character to you you're going to get to know me very very well you got to get to know the God of the universe. He's going to reveal his love and his commitment to you. Just like marriage has a way of demonstrating and proving your love to your spouse, this relationship with God, him in you, shows you how dedicated he is to your success and to your holiness. How dedicated he is to your being able to have all the resources you need to do his will. He's going to show his love for you and his commitment to you. He's going to show his purpose and his plan for you. And then he's also going to show his daily promptings and his leadings to you. That means that when you get up every day and you begin to look about your day and about your world and you say, Lord, what's going to happen today? How are you going to lead me? How are you going to prompt me? He is there to do that. There's never going to be a friend for you like Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you have earthly friends or not. There's never going to be anybody like Jesus for you. And he is with you, and he is in you, and he will disclose himself to you. We're indwelt, we're filled, so that we might know Jesus more, and knowing him, become more like him. Now, there's a world of things I could say about this, but let's re let, let, let it rest right there with that truth today. That he is with you, he is in you, he wants you to know him, and come to love him the way he loves you, and he's going to let you be transformed to become like him. There's no greater hope than that on planet Earth. I hope these are incredible words of, of hope and words of comfort and peace for you today. Jesus is with us. God bless. Until next time.